Hi, my beautiful, lovely people. Hi. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Melissa. Welcome back. Um, Y'all, man. Whew. Uh, okay. Take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, so your girl went back to work this week, and um, it's just been... I've just been busy, busy, busy trying to get back into the routine of work. The routine of work. Um, I was on vacation for two weeks and then going back to work. So trying to get back into the routine. But um, I wasn't able to do a morning devotion. Um, I was just so busy. And normally when I'm at work, sometimes I can do a morning devotion. But some, the way kids was being, kids coming in my classroom, I wasn't able to get out a morning devotion. So, but today... Because today is Wednesday, and I did say that I want to upload the the New Beginners Bible Study on Wednesday, since this is the day that um I have my Bible study, my church, our Bible studies on Wednesday is at 7 o'clock. So I was debating, like, should I do it, Lord, should I do it? You know, I know I said I was going to do it. I came in for work, and I got in the shower, and I just put on my relaxed clothes. And so I was just laying in the bed, and I'm looking like, let me do it real quick. I'm like, let me go do. I'm trying to stay dedicated. Trying to stay dedicated. Uh, you know, doing the um, beginners Bible study. And um, I want to say hello to my new subscriber and old subscribers. Hello, welcome back. Um, I love you with the love of Jesus. Thank you for supporting my channel, for subscribing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for like, and do share this video to bless somebody else. So um. Um, I want to show y'all something real quick before we start. And um, so you all know in my uh, other video I shared that um, our prayer retreat was canceled. It was canceled and um, I was a little devastated. I shared that in my other video. But when I went to church this Sunday, they did give us our bag. The bag that they was going to give us at the prayer retreat. And this is the bag. We got our name on it. And I just want to show you, show you all what's in the bag real quick before I start Bible class. Um, this is a pen. They gave us a pen. Bless oil. They gave us some bless oil. And this is the program book. This is our pro program book. And it says, Christ Temple Apostolic Faith Church New Day and Consecration Retreat, August the 17th through the 20th. And then it has a place where we're just going to go, Bishop Lane Retreat Center. It's in Rockford. And our theme is, our eyes are on you, Lord. And it says, oh, our, oh God, would thou not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that come against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon the Second Chronicles 20 and uh, 12. So this is our program book. And... Some hand sanitizer. And it's like a foot scrub. And this is uh all scriptures. All scriptures is God breath. Second Timothy three and sixteen. It's like a little journal book. It's like a little journal book. And we have a there's another pen, and this is a, I'm going to open this up. I believe this is a fan, and I love little portable fans, you know, because sometimes you won't have to always ask the ushers for a fan, so I like this, and it says the Lord's Prayer, and it says, uh, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is Matthew 6, 9, 18. So I definitely will be um, using this <laughs> this Sunday in church. And... Last and not least, I was saving this for last. This is our prayer retreat shirt for this year. This is the front. The front. And it says, um, Our eyes are on you, Lord. Second Chronicles 25 and 12. 
And then on the back, it said Christ Temple Apostolic Faith Church, Noonday Prayer Retreat 2023. So this is our Prayer Retreat t-shirt. Okay, this is pretty. This is pretty. I like this. Last year, the other one was like, it was like a little darker pink. So this is like white, but I really like that. So I just want to show y'all that real quick. You know, since, um, you know, it was canceled, but if we would have went, I would just gave y'all a tour of my room and I would have gave y'all a tour of my room, but then showed y'all what was in the good, what was in the, uh, the bad So, But I just want to show that for y'all. So, um, we're going to jump into the Bible study. Um, I pray and I hope you guys, you all, you have your you have your Bible ready. You have your notebook paper. You have your pens. You got your hi highlighters so in case you want to highlight anything. So we're going to get started. And I do want to say that um, depending on how depending on how I go with this, like last time, um, it might be a little long. So be on the lookout. When you get through watching this video, do go watch part two. I believe it's probably going to be a part two to this. So after you get done watching this, click on to the next video, okay? And I, you will be blessed by this. So um, last week, we was on the creation. We were still on the creation. We did um, the creation. We did... Um, we did... Um, Adam and Eve. We did Adam and Eve. We we're still on the creation. The first series we did was on creation, how God formed the earth, the uh, the 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 heaven and the earth, and then part two series. Uh, part two series we did Adam and Eve. We we're still on creation. Creation. So in this series, we're going to talk about the fall of man, and we're reading Genesis chapter three. And we're going to read chapter 3, verses 1 through 24. So get your Bible, open up your Bible, and let's get started. And um, before we get started, um, and I do want to say that I'm reading from my Life Application Study Bible. So as you're reading along with me, I'm reading from my Life Application Study Bible. And if you don't have your, your Bible with you, you can... Just go back and rewatch this and get your Bible and just, you know, watch it and, you know, why you read your Bible. So this is a life application study Bible. And then, like I always say in all my videos at the bottom, I'm going to read you the chapter at the top. And then at the bottom, I'm going to read you what it's talking about. So before we get started, I'm going to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ, ruler of all things, Lord I honor you. I give you thanks and praise on today, Lord. And I thank you. I praise you on today for bringing me here on today to deliver another new beginner Bible study, Lord Jesus. I pray and ask that you bless this Bible study on today, that you lead and guide me, that you anoint my mouthpiece, let flesh decrease as you increase, Lord Jesus. I pray and ask that you bind every hindering spirit, every spirit of confusion, um, fear, anxiety, nervousness in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray and ask that you look on your beautiful, lovely people's one today, that you touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord Jesus, that you help them whatever it is that they're going through. And if there's any sickness in their body, I pray and ask that you heal with them, Lord. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet in the name of Jesus. I pray and ask these things in your precious mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get started. We're going to get started because I have my Bible class don't start till seven, so it's five forty-five. So I don't think we're gonna be on here that. Oh, it's gonna be that long. So we're gonna begin and read. We're gonna begin and read at chapter three, chapter three, and it says, "Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field." And when I looked up that word subtle, I just want to read it to you all. Subtle means. It means sly, artful, cunning, crappy. Oh, excuse me. And shading, what is this? And shading as a subtle person, a subtle adversary planned by art. Deceitful as a subtle, he's a schemer, schemer, deceitful, and he's treacherous. He's treacherous. So I just read you the definition of subtle. 
And then it said, now the Sartar was more, was more, now the, not the serpent, the serpent we're talking about, the snake. Now the serpent was more subtle, he was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman, the woman we're talking about, Eve, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God. We at verse, we still at verse, we still at verse 3. Has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse 4, and the serpent said unto woman, and said unto the woman, Eve, you shall not surely die. Now he going to tell her, you shall not surely die. Verse 5, verse 5, for God, for God do not know that in the days you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And um, so now I'm going to go down, and I'm going to read um, what is it saying in verse 4. Verse 4, this is what it's saying. And it said, the human race is bound to God by faith in his word as absolute truth. One, because he knew this he knew this. Satan sought to destroy the woman's faith. So he knew this. So he he, he was out there. He was out to destroy Eve. He was out to destroy her faith. And um to destroy the woman's faith, what God has said by raising doubts about that word. Satan suggests that God did not really mean what he said. And more so for more reference, you can read chapter two, verse sixteen to seventeen. In other words, the first lie purpose by Satan was a form of antimonism. I can't pronounce this word. Antimonism. 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 Deny the judgment of death for deliberation transgression. Two, one of the basic sins of humankind is unbelief in God's word. One of the basic sins of humankind is unbelief in God's word. So he was messing with her faith. He was just messing, he was messing with her, coming at her with her faith, trying to, you know, God had already told her, and he, you won't surely die. And that's like you do us on Sunday this day. Oh, you won't surely die. You won't surely fall. You won't surely get sick. You, you know, that's how he is today. And then he says, um, one of the basic sins of humankind is unbelief in God's word. It is believing that it is believing that somehow God does not really mean what he said about salvation, righteousness, sin, judgment, and death. Satan's most persistent lie is not is is that unrepentant, deliberate sin and rebellion against God will not necessarily bring separation from God and eternal condemnation. And you can read more about that in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 and Galatians 5 and 21 and uh, 1 John 2 and 4. Now verse 5, verse 5 talks about, it says, you shall be as God. And he told him, he said, you, you, shall, you shall be as God. Like when you eat this fruit, you're going to be like God. You know, he's telling them, you're going to be like God. Like, you're going to be smarter than God. Hey, you might even be God. You see how he was, you know, he was just, you know, tricking them up. Um, So it says, Satan, Satan from the beginning of the human race has tempted humans to believe that they can be like God and, de and decide for themselves what is good and what is evil. One, humanity in seeking to be as God became independent from God Almighty and as such became false God. John 10 and 34. Human, humans now seek to gain more knowledge and make an ethical judgment by a pr process of human reason independent from God's more absolute giving. And biblical revelation, nevertheless, nevertheless, God alone has the wisdom and power to determine what is good and what is evil. Two, 
scripture declare that all who seek to be God shall perish from the earth. All who seek to be God shall perish. So all who claim it to be like they God, that they God, they God Almighty, they're gonna be perished, they're gonna perish from the earth. Um and that's why people have to be careful when they um that's why people you have to be careful when you have they have to be careful when they try to, you know, tip themselves of God and say, I'm all this, I'm all my I'm I'm better than God. You they have to be careful. You have to be very careful. And so then it goes to say, um Scripture declares that all who seek to be gods shall perish from the earth and from under these heaven. And this is Jeremiah 10, 10, 11. This will also be the fate, the feet of the Antichrist. So that's the feet of the Antichrist who will claim that he is God. So you see people going around now, they claim that they God, this, they, you know, the Antichrist. And you can read more about that in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. So now we have verse 6. And it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wide, she took of that fruit and did eat and then gave it also to her husband. Now, every time I read this, I read this verse over and over and over and over. And the part that gave when it says she gave it to Adam, you would think when she gave it to Adam, Adam would say, Honey, you know, any husband, you know, don't we not eating it. Don't eat that. Honey, put that down. Honey, we can't eat that. You know what the father said. We we can't eat that. But no. Adam took it and he ate it too. He ate it too. So Adam, he wasn't playing his role as the head, as her cover. Because your husband, he's your he's the head, he's your cover. And if he see that his wife is like She's going, he should, he's supposed to pull her back like, no, sweetie, no, we got, we're going to stay on this path. You're supposed to, you know, submit to your husband. So she gave it to Adam and Adam was like, yeah, come on, well, this he, this, this, he, hey, we, come on, let's eat this. And he ate it. Come on now. Adam, he's supposed to be there. So that's what got me too. And I was like, he wasn't playing his role as a husband. He's supposed to be not covering. Okay. So that's verse six. And she gave she desired to make one watch pleasant. Wait, let's go back. And pleasant. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat it. And um, so down at the bottom, it doesn't give you, it doesn't talk more about this verse, but it said you can read more about it in Matthew 4 and 1. Matthew 4 and 1. And, oh wait, yes it do. Okay, so verse 6, it says, The woman did eat her husband with her. When Adam and Eve sinned, more, when Adam and Eve sinned, moral and spiritual death came immediately. For more uh, clear reference, you can read chapter 2, verse 17. While physical death came later, chapter 5 and verse 1, 1, God has said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Chapter 2, verse 17. Thus, spiritual and moral death occur at once when they sin. So right away, like soon, they ate of this. I can imagine. I'm, 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 I'm imagining it in my mind. Like soon, they ate of this. Like right away, they probably start feeling like this connection, this separation from God. Because once you sin, once you sin, like right away. I know with me. From like in in uh, me from like in the past when I have committed a simple act, right away you feel like this disconnection. Right away it's like you feel a disconnection. You feel apart from God, apart apart from God. Like you just feel the separation. Like like whoa, wait a minute, what did I just do? What just happened? At first I was feeling all connected. I was feeling in harmony. I was feeling in peace. But when I did this, I felt like something just. I was like a, a darkness come upon you, you know. So I can just imagine when they ate that fruit that they just was like, right away, they was like, you know, felt a separation. And God, you know, God, he know us. He made us. He created us. So right then at that moment when they ate that fruit, God probably was like, he probably felt it. He was like, what did my children just do? 
like what did they just do and that's probably why we came through the garden like adam i'm just paraphrasing adam eve where are you what did you do what did you just do because i can feel it you know i'm just paraphrasing that's what in my imaginary mind in my man i'm just you know i'm just trying to paint a picture for y'all like he probably was like what did you just do so okay y'all we're gonna go on um chapter seven and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked so now they're like wait a minute adam where your clothes at eve babe where your clothes at you know and they mad you know right they probably i'm just paraphrasing y'all like so they ate the fruit why don't why we ain't got no clothes on you know and they and they knew that they were naked and they and they saw a fig and they saw a fig leaf together and made themselves aprons aprons so they made themselves clothes so chapter seven so now we're going to read about did i finish reading that no oh, i'm sorry y'all let's go back we're going to go back to chapter we're going to go back to verse six and i'm reading from the bottom and it said, moral death, moral death, moral death consists in the death of God's life in them and their nature becoming sinful. Spiritual death meant that their former relationship to God and innocence was destroyed, resulting in a state of sinful sinfulness. Since the sin of Adam and Eve, every person born comes into the world with a sinful nature. So because of what Adam and Eve, I never forget what my grandma said. She said Adam and Eve broke the rule. Now they're the debt we have to pay. I never my grandma always said that. And so it says the nature it says let's go back, y'all. Spiritual death meant that their former relationship to God and innocence was destroyed, resulting in a state of sinfulness. Since the sin of Adam and Eve, every person born into the world with a sinful nature in after the flesh carnally minded romans 8 5 through 8 this corruption of human nature involves their innate desire to go one's own selfish way without concerning concern for god or others and it is passed on to all human beings and it's chapter 5 verse 3 and then it says see romans 3 10 through 18 2 however that now where nowhere does scripture teach that all sin when adam sinned or that his guilt was imputed to the whole human race see romans 5 12. the bible does not teach that adam introduced the law of sin and death to all humanity romans for more clarification read romans 5 romans chapter 5 verse 12 and chapter 8 verse 2 and first corinthians 15 21 and 22 so now we at verse 7 we at verse 7 and um we at verse 7 mm, no we at verse 8 okay we at verse 8 and they heard the voice of the lord now here come god god is walking through the garden and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden and in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves why they had him why are they hiding? Why are they hiding him? Because now they know they did something wrong. Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? Where are thou, Adam? And so now I'm going to read to you what verse 8 is saying. They hid themselves. They hid. Why did they hide themselves? Because whenever you 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 commit a sinful act you know you know you feel convicted so they hid them because they knew they did something wrong the guilt and the consciousness of sin caused adam and eve to shun god they felt afraid and uncomfortable in his presence knowing that they were sin they were sinful and under his displeasure and his displeasure and this condition they found it impossible to draw near to him because like i said the separation now they felt apart from him 
And so now they they're just too ashamed to be in his presence, you know. You know how you do something wrong and your father saying, Come here. And so now they're ashamed to be in his presence. They felt afraid and uncomfortable in his presence, knowing that they were sinful and under his displeasure. In this condition, they found it impossible to draw near to him with confidence. Um Acts two Acts chapter Acts chapter twenty three and one I'll give you more notes. And chapter 24 and 6 and give you more notes on that and our sinful condition we too are like Adam and Eve however God has provided us a way to cleanse our guilt conscience free free us from sin and restore us to his fellowship the way the way called Jesus Christ John 14 and 6 through the redemption of God provided in his son Instead of running from God to hide, we draw near to him in order to receive his love. To receive his love, mercy, and grace and help in time of need. See Hebrews 4 and 16 for more notes in chapter 7 and 24. Okay.